Hey guys, today I'm gonna be showing you how my PvP bot works. So let's see. Let me just show you the bot itself. As you can see, it does dodge arrows. And it's not bad, but sometimes it can get hit with arrows. I mean, it's not perfect. And I'll show you how the bot works. And if I let the bot attack me, I mean, um, if it actually attacks me, yeah, as you can see, it, it actually does aim at me, so that's good. I mean, it works, we can confirm, and it did hit me right now. Ow. So I'll quickly kill it. Yeah, so the bot is now killed. Um, and I'll show you how it really works. So what we are doing here is when I click the button, I just clear my inventory, give myself a bow, some arrows, a saturation, and we add ourselves a tag. Uh, this tag will be targeted by the bot. So if anyone with that tag is near the bot, the bot will target them. So here is where our command blocks are stored for the bot itself. And it really is quite small. I mean, it just occupies a little bit of area. I was expecting it to occupy a way more area. So this is why there is a chat box here. But if we see, it's quite small. So let me quickly explain it. This block right here, what does it do? So basically, what I wanted was that the button right here, what I wanted was it to be hooked up to that area so that whenever I click the button, uh, the commands here would get triggered. How would I do that? you might ask. So the easiest solution I thought was to just check if the button is powered. If it is, then we set a redstone block here and this activates a series of command blocks. Basically, whenever the button is powered, um, this these blocks get triggered and it sets a redstone block right here and when it's not powered, it just changes to air. So if I do right there, uh, it won't work because it is currently not powered, so it will be changed to air. Now, what these command blocks do is just spawn the bot. I mean, simple. We spawn the bot, which I have beautifully named Pro Archer. And we clear its inventory, give it a bow, arrows. Yeah, basically, it just spawns the bot and gives it arrows and all that stuff. And this command block just kills anything that's not a player. So, like, if there were arrows from previous attempts, it would clear them out. So that's great. This command block right in the middle of the redstone loop just sets the game mode to survival. I actually, I made the loop after I placed the command block and I'm way too lazy to actually remove it and place somewhere else. So it is there. I don't know for why, but it's there. Now what we are doing is having a sticky piston right there and a block right there. And it is powered by a redstone torch right there and it goes to here. Now what does this all do? Basically, we are here, we have a few more command blocks and what they are doing is checking if there is any arrow in the world. I mean, any arrow that is flying in the world. So if I do right there, you can see the pistons get triggered because what these command blocks do is change this block right there to a redstone block. So if we change this to a redstone block, this torch will get off and the piston will contract. So if I show you, you can see it turns to a redstone block for a short moment of time. Now basically what we are doing with this is, when there is not an arrow in the air, we can let the bot aim and attack us. So what this command block does is just make the, just make the bot aim at us and just a little bit higher than us so that uh, if we are at far distance the bot can still attack us. As you can see right here, uh, the Y coordinate has 4 more than usual. And then these command blocks, this just stops the uh, the bot from whatever it was doing earlier. This command block, I'll quickly explain it in a minute. Now, or, now only when the piston is extended, basically meaning only when there is no arrows in there, the redstone signal can go out and only then the bot can actually aim at us. But what if there is an arrow in the air like this? which will make this quartz block change into a redstone block and then this repeater will get power which will power these chain of command blocks. Now the, what these chains of command blocks do is let the bot actually dodge. 
So first of all, we stop the bot from whatever it is doing earlier. Then we spawn an arm stand uh, to wherever the player that is fighting the bot was looking. So if I just do slash summon arm stand and at the arrow coordinates, the arrow coordinates dictate where the player is actually looking. And if I do like five, so you can see this armor this armor stand was spawned of um, like five blocks away from me and at the direction i was looking at so basically what we are doing is spawning an armor stand and we are spawning 60 blocks away from the player to the direction that player is looking so there is no interference uh, from the armor stand itself so that our bow doesn't hit the armor stand itself when we are fighting and then what we are doing is uh, after we spawn the armor stand, we are just making our bot look at the armor stand but at the same line as uh, it was already in. Basically, let's say I have uh, uh, this line of blocks and I spawn my armor stand right there. Okay, so basically, what this bot is doing is if it was facing here earlier, basically, the bot would look at the armor stand without changing its z axis. So it will only look at the armor stand of its y axis. So if the armor stand spawns here, it will look right there because the armor stand is a little bit that way. So basically we are making the bot look at that place and then we just make the bot move backward. If I spawn the armor stand right there, we can confidently say that the arrow will be hitting that way. So that's where our armor stand will spawn. So the best option would be for the bot to go away from the area. And for that, I am making it move backwards. So it's quite simple, but there are a few flaws which I would like to discuss it right here. The number one is, you might have noticed this arena is just one block in width. Basically, if I try to move from here, I cannot move. There are barrier blocks here, right here and here. And it's the same for the bot. If I go here, you can see there are barrier blocks here. So why am I doing this? This is because there is a small problem or a bug in carpet mode. I don't know. If I spawn a player, Alex, uh, let's set the game mode to survival. So now if I spawn a player, uh, Alex, for example, and if I like make the bot move so says player move alex move forward and then if i make it stop you can see it still moves a little bit right there if i make the bot move ahead let's if i make the bot move forward you can see the bot actually moves forward that's simple enough but if I stop it, you can see it does not immediately swat. It should have stopped right here, but it decided to go more ahead, which is very, very, very annoying for the task I'm doing right now. Because if if I allow the bot to move in like this 2D axis, what will happen is it will, uh, if, the, if an arrow get fired, it will dodge the arrow and then it will try to aim the player again because we have a sticky piston that sees if an arrow is in air if the arrow is not in air we can say that it hit a wall or it hit the ground so that means the bot can start aiming at the player and attacking it and attacking it and attacking the player again but what happens is here when when if it's in a 2d axis the bot will dodge the arrow but it will still be moving a little bit and then if I try to stop the bot, it won't stop and it will start moving forward because the player is in the forward direction for it and it will start moving forward and it will get closer and closer to the player making it very easy for the player to actually win the fight so we, I had to resort to making this uh, making this uh, one block area so that the bot doesn't move forward and I don't know if that is a bug or something else. If it's not and if there is a simple fix, please let me know. Now that flaw aside, let's see how the bot actually attacks, how it actually uses its bow. So here we have a, a loop right here, which is a comparator loop. So it just loops right around. And basically what we are doing is here, we since it holds the bow in his hand, 
uh, we will first make it use the bow so using that command if i give myself a bow it will start to use it constantly and then this redstone torch will get turned off when this is powered so and after the redstone torch turns back on the bot will stop which means it will release the arrow and which means since it's aiming at the player if the player is stationary the arrow will hit the player so the stop is there so whenever we are not attacking the player we just stop it and that's it for the bot it's quite really simple so let's play uh, another game so here we have our bot. Um, what? Why is it shooting up? Oh wait, I haven't killed Alex yet. Okay. Ow, that hurts. Wow, really accurate shots. The bot's not bad, it's okay. Now thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any bot suggestions or any suggestions at all, please let me know down in the comments below. And a world download will be linked in the description. Thank you and goodbye.